Hi, I'm Beatrice Gaw and welcome to Sports Wrap. It's an action-packed day for Team Philippines as we cheered on gymnast Carlos Yulo and sprinter Christina Knott in the Tokyo Olympics today in their events. Let's find out how they fared today, Monday, August 2. Filipino world champion gymnast Carlos Yulo came close to a podium finish but fell short at fourth place in the Olympic vault finals. Yulo nailed a final score of 14.716, falling short of a fraction of a point at 0.017 from bronze medalist Artur Davtian of Armenia. The 4'11 Dynamo recorded a 14.566 in his first attempt after drawing a 0.1 penalty for his landing, but he rebounded with a 14.866 in the second attempt to pull up the average score. The Filipino's second attempt was the second highest score among all attempts behind Tunisia's Adem Asil's performance that recorded 15.266. Though he failed to medal, the 21-year-old gymnast flashed a big smile after seeing his score. South Korea's Shin Jae-won, who made the debut in the Olympic Games, took home the gold after edging out silver medalist and gymnastics veteran Denis Abliazin of Russia. Christina Knott failed to advance further into the Tokyo 2020 Olympics Athletics Tournament after clocking 23.80 seconds and finishing fifth and last in Heat 7 of the women's 200-meter run. Only the top three sprinters of each heat and the next three fastest across the seven heats will see action in the 24-field semifinal. Knott is the Philippine record holder in the 200-meter run at 23.01 seconds, setting it during the country's hosting of the SEA Games, where she broke the mark twice. That was so close for Kaloy, and I'm sure that was such a great experience for KK as she competed in the Olympic centerpiece event. We're really just so proud of our Filipino Olympians who are there in Tokyo Olympics. So now let's go to the medal tally. As of 5 p.m. Monday, China leads for the fifth straight time with 27 gold medals, 16 silver, and 14 bronze. USA will have to catch up as it only has 20 golds, 24 silver, and 16 bronze, but it has a tournament high of 60 medals. Host country Japan locks in on third place with 17 golds, 5 silver, and 9 bronze. Philippines is at 49th with six others, Bermuda, Ethiopia, Iran, Latvia, Puerto Rico, and Thailand. Philippines still has Hydaelyn Diaz's gold medal to show, but will rise up the medal tally tomorrow after Nesti Petesho's women's featherweight final. Puerto Rico won its first Tokyo Olympics gold thanks to Jasmine Camacho Kin in the women's 100-meter hurdles, becoming the second Puerto Rican to win an Olympic gold to win an Olympic gold. Now we have six, Philippine, six more Filipino athletes vying for a medal in the Tokyo Olympics. Let's get to the world headlines. The U.S. women's basketball team denied France with a come-from-behind 93-82 victory to book a quarterfinal slot in the Tokyo Olympics. Olympics debutante Asia Wilson led the team once again with 22 points for the U.S. 52nd straight victory in the Games. Though U.S. was down in the first quarter, they outscored the French 22-15 in the final quarter. A heartwarming story from the Tokyo Olympics came last night when best friends Mutaz Eza Barshim of Qatar and Italy's Gianmarco Tamberi shared the men's high jump gold. Both Barshim and Tamberi ended with jumps of 2.37 meters and had no failed attempts until they attempted to clear 2.39. After three failures each at that height, an Olympic official first offered them a jump off to decide the winner. Barshim persuaded organizers to let him share the gold with Tamberi. The official nodded and the two athletes clasped hands and whooped for joy. Southeast Asia rejoices as Indonesia bagged its first Tokyo Olympics gold in the country's favorite sport, badminton. 
Women's doubles duo of Gracia Poli and Apriyani Rahayu swept former world champions Chen Ching Chen and Tia Yi Fan of China in straight sets 21 to 19, 21 to 15. It was a remarkable Cinderella run as the Indonesian women's doubles pair were unseeded and went on to defeat China's number four seed. Simone Biles will finally compete in the balance beam final the last women's event on the Tokyo Olympics gymnastics schedule on Tuesday, August 3. USA Gymnastics released a statement that Tokyo all-around champion Suni Lee and Simone Biles will be competing in the beam tomorrow. It will be the first time Biles will be seen competing in Tokyo following her withdrawal from last Tuesday's women's team final after her opening vault citing mental health issues. Biles, who won four golds at the 2016 Rio Games, dropped out of the all-around, floor exercise, vault, and asymmetric bars finals. Biles is the reigning world champion on the beam and picked up an Olympic bronze on the apparatus in Rio. Win or lose, we are celebrating world champion gymnast Carlos Yulo's performance and appearance in the Tokyo Olympics. Joining me today, we have... Gymnastics Association of the Philippines Women's Technical Chair Committee member and international judge Lindsay Arellano Co calling in from the US to talk about Kaloy's performance. Hi, B. Hi, good Ms. afternoon. Lindsay. Good well, it's actually evening already here and good, oh, good morning evening. to you. <laughs> Grab the time zone differences. So, Miss Lindsay, like I'm sure you've watched and supported Kaloy all the way in this Olympics. And it's just so good to finally see him compete in the men's fault final. So what did you think about it? What were your initial reactions? Shepra, you know, like everyone, you always hope for a medal, right? But I was really super happy with his finish. Um, yeah, because we placed fourth and it wasn't... Uh, you know, it was a really, really close final. Like the difference between the top three. Actually, nag tie pa nga yung gold and silver. They, they tied, but there's a tiebreaker process kasi in gymnastics. So, score wise, is actually the third, right? So, I think that's such a major, major accomplishment, exact, especially for like a small country like us, that we don't have as much funding as this bigger gymnastics program. So, I think that's really like, it's mind blowing, actually. Na, na, Nag final style, tapos fourth pa. Yeah, and also it is Kaloy's first time to yes. see action in the Olympics, and he's the youngest. I mean, in that in that vault final, he's the youngest, so he has like more room to grow. Like I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of the Russian men, I think it's his third or his fourth Olympic, so it's his first. He's super young. So yeah, it's really great news. Many of the uh, many of the younger gymnasts are usually just there for for you know for the experience. Muna, and then I'll train a few more years, and maybe I'll be a I'll be a finalist. But for him to qualify to an event final in his first year at such a young age is it's just encouraging for for the Philippines. Hopefully. And in his second attempt, he scored really high. Uh, it was yes. a 14.866. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, how, like, from a gymnast's perspective, like, how difficult, like, how, how would you evaluate that? Because I'm sure it was very difficult, like, the execution and everything. Right. So, like this, because uh, the score of his second vault, because like this, um, the gym, the score of a uh, a score is taken from two: the difficulty value of the whatever you did, plus the execution, meaning how clean it was, how many mistakes you made, where your legs bent, ganyan. So Kaloy actually had the highest execution score, tied with another guy, one of the guys from Turkey. So they had the highest execution, meaning um, the cleanliness or the form of the vault among all the finalists yeah but again these are all because point one point one difference lang but so uh getting a score like that and if i computed it based also on his difficulty value it means na uh the deductions given to him for that specific vault second vault was just like 0. 0.7 0. 0.8 
kasi average din yan of the judges scores eh. so kaya may 0.66 ganyan so the judges gave him like a 0.7 point and that's super small in gymnastics dami dami pa din deduct diba so to get a 0.7 0.8 deduction for execution is really like that's world class and the fact that he actually had this big smile and coach yeah, I was also so happy proud. Mm, I mean I, I was so happy that I saw that smile at the end of the Olympic Games. So I saw his face. I mean we all saw his face after floor final. And you wouldn't want I mean after floor qualification and you wouldn't want to end an Olympics like that. I mean, you know. So for me to see that genuine smile that he knew i know he knew he did a good job um that was a good ano and so it would hopefully be a good start for the next process yeah that's really a pat on the back for himself mm-hmm. because we couldn't be there we couldn't be there physically to cheer him on but then at least he knows in his heart that he actually executed his best and it was very successful. You know, Miss Lindsay, um, actually, the last time we saw Kaloy and actually cheered for him physically was during the 2019 SEA Games where mm-hmm. he won two gold and five silver medals. So, and then in the whole 2020 naman, parang naging nagpandemia eh. So, we didn't really see a lot of Kaloy. So, how would you... um? Like evaluate his improvement, the man, like from twenty nineteen, then now twenty twenty one. Well, in terms of improvement, I also cannot say much because, like you, um, he's been in Japan all this time, so we haven't really see we haven't really seen him. Although, uh, what's lucky, I mean, uh, really lucky about his being in Japan is, um, he's allowed to compete in the Japan tournament. So in that sense, you know, and the. J- Obviously, the Japanese landed silver in men's team, right? And a lot of the Japanese men got medals in the individual events. And the actually, the individual all-round champion is Japanese. So the good thing about that is even during the pandemic, he was testing himself and he was competing against the best in the world. So, but there were, ang hira pe, like sometimes I try to Google, pero since it's Japanese, I cannot find footage of the Japanese competitions he's joined. Or sometimes Coach Mune might might send in a video or a clip. So in terms of improvement, I cannot really say because my own, like you, um, I've only seen some clips and I, I didn't see it in relation to other people. But yeah, but. I think also just being able to sustain yourself during the pandemic and not, and not downgrading stuff is also a, a good thing, you know, to have your head straight. So, yon. Yeah. And what was he doing in Tokyo, naman, the whole 2020? Would you know his situation there? No, I'm sure they just really trained and trained and trained. And um, early on in the pandemic, actually, I was chatting with him. Sabi ko, oi, ano ba? Sarado mga gym dyan? Na, na, nakaka-train ka ba? This was like, siguro, later to 2020, I was asking. Sabi niya, ay, sabi niya, oh, bukas yung mga gym dito. So, they were able. So, I think, uh, and they were, um, early, early on, I would see videos of him na nag, nag-workout na sila sa bahay, ganon. Pero, much later on, medyo super lockdown pa sa ibang parts of the world, uh, parang na-open na naman yung mga gyms nila tapos yung nakaka-train naman siya. So, I think the training naman never really Parang hindi naman siya super na hito. Plus, he was lucky nga to be able to join some of the Japanese competitions. Um, so, yun, I think it was just uh, still continuing throughout the pandemic or yeah, throughout 2020. Yeah, and seeing uh, how well he did in the Tokyo Olympics, like, I'm mm. sure, like, he really trained well for it. Like, it seemed like something that was very mm. consistent and something that he never stopped doing, especially mm-hmm. being away from the Philippines, like, the whole time also. And then, so, Miss Lindsay, like, what can we... You said that uh, it was very encouraging, like, seeing how well he performed in his first ever Olympics. So, what is actually next for Kaloy, and what can we expect from him? Well, uh, again, this is all... It's all, co- uh, of course, it's all Kaloy's decisions and whatever, right? And... Also, the planning of Coach Mune. I know there's a World Championships again this year, actually, also in Japan, sometime um, towards the fourth quarter of the year. Uh, I'm assuming, I don't know, I really don't know, honestly, but I'm assuming that they will be joining that again. 
um, syempre forward target is still Paris, pero like I was telling people, you know, um, we always hope to continue on, but you never really, kasi it's still another qualification process. It doesn't mean na, oh, nag-Tokyo ka, okay, game. O, sige, sali ulit tayo pa. I mean, we will still have to work hard and hopefully qualify other gymnasts, no? Sana hindi lang, sana next time may kasama na siya, hindi siya lang mag-isa. Ganon. So, but again, it's it's another uh, it's another hill we need to slowly climb. It's not you don't get a free pass. Now once you're an Olympian, you can join the next Olympics. Hindi ganon yon. So I guess working hard. Hopefully he gets to rest muna. Sana may rest bago World Championships. I mean he deserves it. Um, I don't know if my plans of coming back to the Philippines because of our our own situation, our own, our, our own quarantine situation. I don't really know. Honestly, I don't really know, but um yon this is, we have so we coach mune has good targets and plans always for kaloy yeah yeah i liked what he said that hopefully there's more than one gymnast now from the philippines in the paris 2024 olympics so thank you so much miss dizzy for joining us tonight and good morning again there thank you and i hope more we get more medals from our other athletes in the next days Yes. All right. So speaking of more medals to come, stay tuned for our coverage tomorrow as the long-awaited women's featherweight semi uh, final bout of Nesty Petesho is happening already tomorrow at 12.05 p.m. Philippine time. But then before that, we have Carlo Paalam kicking off the day's events at 10.15 a.m. in the men's flyweight quarterfinal. Then at night, we have EJ of Vienna in the men's Paul Vol pole vault final at 6.20 p.m. Philippine time. Again, this is Beatrice Go, Rappler, Manila. <laughs>